you can't get your mower. No one else is outside with you. You have to stay in here until somebody can be up front with you. At the home of Jean Miller Jacobs and John Jacobs in Independence, Kentucky, chaos is the new normal. Once empty nesters with a comfortable lifestyle, they now have custody of their three young grandchildren. Check. Your your one piece was on the floor. You want a sandwich? I want a we visited with them to learn about their experience with kinship care. It all started with a phone call. On a Monday in August, um, I had been, I work from home, I had been running a meeting, I'm on my phone, um, my phone's just going crazy, I'm getting these calls from a number I don't recognize. And I got off the meeting and there was a message from a detective saying for me to call him and then there was a message from my son and the message was, Mom, I'm really sorry. Jean's son and daughter-in-law struggle with drug addiction. Her son's arrest jeopardized the safety of their children. I printed off the paperwork and I called the courthouse to get emergency custody. And I went and got the children, brought them home. My husband showed up early and I asked him, you know, what are you doing here? Of course, the house is total chaotic. I hadn't even had a chance to talk to him. He had no idea. And he said, I lost my job. So we went from having two people working and things fairly nice to um, loss of income and getting three children. How has that changed your lifestyle and even what you thought you might be doing at this point in uh, your life? It's all thrown out the window. <laughs> Most people in our situation are so overwhelmed. I, I, I cannot describe how overwhelmed you are when it happens. Um, it's so overwhelming and then you go through a process of grief um, you grieve for your child. Um, my son was in the detention center and I was heartbroken. Um, and then when you get past some of that stuff, um, for me, I'm different. I'm kind of like, this is a situation now, how do we move forward? I'm more of a logical, let's go forward from here. My husband is not. And the rehearsal dinner, and then you were supposed to... You know, and he feels very restricted. He feels like he can't do anything because we have to coordinate everything that we that we do. And then last. John takes care of the children while Jean works from home. What they thought would be several weeks or months of kinship care has turned into three years. Yes, come on down here, come on. What are some of the things that maybe those of us on the outside who are looking in at your life for just a few moments, what is it you really want people to understand about your challenges and about how you didn't expect this to be where you'd be in your 50s? A lot of people think that we get subsidies and help um, from the state of Kentucky or from the government. We do get uh, KTAP and we do get um, uh, medical. Um, but a lot of people are shocked when they find out we don't get assistance with daycare, we don't get assistance with food. A lot of people ask, do you get respite? No, there's no respite for people in our situation. Do you mind sharing how much money you do receive from the state for taking care of the children? I receive 240 some 46 49 dollars a total. month. Total. For all three kids? For all three That's children. not per child? It's not per child. Wow. You're exhausted. With all of that exhaustion, was there any sense that your pride was wounded, that you had to seek help? Oh, yes. So um, I was a single mother for a long time. I went to school. I have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. I was determined to take care of my child. And every step, it's begging for help. Somebody who had worked so hard to take care of everything and now you can't even function. Um, can you can you hold on just one second? I mean, I can't work because I have a screaming child, and you have to literally beg for help, and then they have to tell you no because you make too much. Keep my eyes open. Though Gene's son and his wife are on the road to recovery, Gene and John continue to be the best care providers for the children. They get support from other grandparents raising their grandchildren. They all share similar concerns. I think respite care is huge.
for um, people in our situation, anybody that you talk to, um, you, you can't replenish, you know, you can't get in a good place because you're just constantly going. Do you ever think about, my gosh, if me and John weren't here, what would happen to these three beautiful children? Oh, I don't even want to think about, think about that. Um, it absolutely breaks my heart and my soul when you talk to somebody and they have tears in their eyes and they say, I couldn't take them because I couldn't feed them. I, I, I can't imagine that something so basic, you forget clothing them or put shoes on them or anything else. They can't even buy the food. And that's a reality. And that is a reality. I've met more than one person who has been in that situation. This program was funded in part by a grant from the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky, investing in communities, informing health policy.